Let's talk Dexterity Games. Dexterity Games have been around pretty much forever. I mean, Jenga is one of the most well-known ones. Crokinole uh, is a, another great example of a game that's been around since just about forever. There's something really appealing to using actual physical skills to accomplish uh, small menial tasks and uh, that make you feel good about winning. But I mean, nowadays there's, there's so much complication with uh, so many different types of board games out there that sometimes dexterity doesn't quite cut it. So you have to throw in a little something extra, a little, a little spice. And today we're looking at a game that does just that by taking an economics core and throwing in a pretty weird uh, dexterity element that I think, well, I'll tell you what, take a look at what I think. Island Hopper was cooked up by Scott Alms, the guy that made such weird titles as The Great Dinosaur Rush and Coaster Park. In this high-flying adventure, players try to fulfill contracts and bring tourists to the correct destination. The kicker, because there's always a kicker, is that when a player is a pilot, they have to try to blindly drop one of the wooden goods tokens onto the islands. To start things off, players have a hand of cards that either give them money for successfully landing on islands, which deliver tourists, or landing specific goods onto very specific islands as contracts. If a player is the pilot, they can't complete contracts, but everyone else can. This is where it gets interesting. After players bid to see who becomes the pilot, every other player then starts to place bribes next to islands they desperately want to be visited. Once coins have been piled up, the pilot then gets to choose which goods to fly and to which islands. In a last ditch effort, they can scan the table taking mental note of the island's placements, then they have to select a good from the center island and close their eyes. Lifting the token, they then have to drop it on an island with the corresponding symbol. Some people make this look incredibly easy, and for those I highly recommend using your direction tokens. See, other players can't speak while the pilot flies unless they pay one of their tokens. A player can pay one of these tokens to speak one word. This is crucial when you're trying to aid the pilot or cause them to crash into the sea. Really it's your choice. After the last round, players count up their cash and take bonuses for sets collected during the game and the richest player wins. The most infuriating aspect of this game is that, like most dexterity games, some people will be incredible at this. One look at the board and a quick drop onto the island and they're done. Thankfully, these little pieces are a little bouncy for being chunks of wood. Also, letting a good pilot win the auction can be far more lucrative for you than it is for them. But that's assuming they'll try to win the auction. We've run into situations where players have reluctantly bid at one dollar to become the pilot, just because no one else wanted to. While it's rare, it does happen and can cause a bit of a standstill. Also because you're flying blind, there's always the possibility that you'll accidentally fly too close to the table and touch the island with your hand before dropping. Now I'm slowly being won over by the idea of economics games being mixed with dexterity games. I think it brings something fun to a dry genre and it brings some weight to a silly genre. That isn't always necessary, but in instances like Saffronito, it works really well. The same is true for Island Hopper. On the one hand, the dexterity aspect of having to fly blind and trust or not trust single word instructions is a lot of fun, as is watching someone try to fly this. It has the marks of a fun experience, gaming or otherwise, engaging all members of the group. Then on the other hand, you're having to balance offering points as a bribe in order to gain more points in the hopes that the pilot can actually land where you want them to. Sure, there's always the possibility that a player that's particularly bad at the dexterity aspect could get really frustrated with this, but the fact that you can, if you want, completely avoid the aspect of the game that has to do with dexterity and still be competitive is a really interesting prospect. It really is an impressive mix of mechanisms that blend together very well. While a little more thinky than a traditional dexterity game, Island Hopper has a lot to offer with not a large barrier of entry at all. And really, once things get flying, it becomes easy to engross yourself in the narrative. The components are top-notch, and with the islands all being freestanding, you could really set this up however it best suits you. For me, it was definitely a win, and it's something I would recommend.